I'll tell you what, I thought all three guys that threw the baseball um, threw the ball really well. Uh, I thought Bryce had really good stuff. Uh, I thought we played really good defense behind him. When he was out there, we turned some double plays. Um, you know, made some nice plays. Uh, I thought Bonham was really good. I mean, he sees confidence growing a little bit as he starts to get better starts. His Bryce's, can you see it growing? Yeah. He's pretty confident as it is. If it gets any more, we got our hands full. And, uh, he's he's a confident young man, and um, really proud of the way. I mean, it's you know the way that game turned yesterday. Come out today and give you a quality start, if that's what you want to call it. It's just what we needed. And yeah, the more times he gets on the mound, he should get more confident. What's the? Do you have like an ideal role for him? Maybe like a midweek starter or like a bullpen type of guy. That well, aren't you still working that out? Well, you got guys like him and uh, John McMillan. Those guys come on. Those guys could pitch at the front end of anybody's rotation. You just want to try to get them out there as much as we can, and uh, they can dominate lineups. And so. That's really where we got him right now to make sure we can leave him in there and throw his pitches and find some rhythm and timing. With what you saw from, from him today, and you mentioned McMillan and Dallas the other night, does it make how much, how much discussion is there internally about who to, who to start? And oh, there'll be some. There'll, there'll be some. We'll, we'll do the best we can to figure out, you know, the best way to name three starters and, and the bullpen be the strongest. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, all we do is baseball. So, yeah, there's quite a bit talk internally, maybe too much sometimes. But that's a pleasant problem to have. Absolutely, you bet. How nice is it to see a kid like Easton come up first hit of the year and kind of spark that four run in? Yeah, Easton's a winner. I mean, one thing is, is um, uh, he's always won. Kid's always won on any baseball team he's been on. He's going to do things to help you win baseball games. He's going to do the small things, and uh, really cool. I mean, I, all three of his at bats are three of the four were good. I mean, that's all you can ask ask out of him. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to go back to Bonnet for just a moment. Back on uh, first weekend when he was having trouble locating, you said that you're ecstatic because of his stuff. How has his stuff looked to you, and how does it compare to other? Staff. I mean, so he always good at raw stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was throwing, um, yeah, he's throwing 86 mile an hour sliders. I think he's up to 95 or 6. So, yeah, stuff's really good. The angle's tough. Everything about him's tough. It's just a matter of just him getting in rhythm and strike one. And uh, the more he does that, the better he's going to be. And guys like, you know, there's a lot of these guys, guys like him, if they commanded the ball and threw strike one, it's hard to get them to school sometimes. And uh, we're fortunate to have him and thankful to have him and just hope they keep coming. You remember Nolan Ryan back in the, mm -hmm. you know, how they talked about how he hit, took him time to find it. And these guys with power arms sometimes takes a little longer. Just on it earlier, how nice is it to kind of wrap up this five-game extended kind of series with a W? Uh, it was a lot better than the other. I mean, yesterday wasn't any fun. Um, you know, I, I think the guys learned quite a bit from playing five days in a row. I think you can learn a lot there. And um, Today was definitely a grind for them. Monday's usually their day off after a three-day weekend, much less a four. And uh, But the one thing that's cool is you can you can see who's – the game will reveal who's who's got routines and who's diligent. Uh, because if you are, you can get your mind ready and you can get your body ready to go no matter how many days in a row you play. I say, does this kind of change how you plan the rest of the week schedule-wise? Oh, we'll just – we'll flip tomorrow. Tomorrow will be – we'll give them tomorrow, kind of get in the weight room and get their legs under them. And then you practice Wednesday, then we leave Thursday. So mm -hmm. it's not really a whole lot to the week other than that. Do you think this is a good kind of – Yeah, the f interesting thing is baseball tournaments now you get days off. You really you're learning to deal with in baseball tournaments now the days off as much as you are playing every day. I, I'd much rather play every day. Big 12 tournament you go, you play, you usually sit a day and then play. Omaha is the same way. Um, and so 
Now, there is a time in Omaha where if it rains, we're talking about, to the staff was talking about, if it rained last year, if we could have got on a roll, we'd have had to play three or four days in a row because of the rain. So, But it's, it's a good experience. I mean, all these guys aspire to play after college. Most of them do. And uh, some of them find out in these five days, you know, if they really like it or not. So, a couple would you, I was going to say, would you, considering this happened a little bit by accident since you said Michigan called you all and y'all kind of had to right. rearrange it, since you kind of threw it pretty well and won four games and, had, and saw a lot of, like you said, got a lot of information. Oh, yes. To try to do this again. You know, if it's up to me and you didn't get punished for it, like the most stressful part of that game is RPI. Man, their RPI, I mean, our RPI dropped seven points last night by losing. And uh, we woke up Sunday morning and we were in a really good spot and still in a really good spot. If you didn't get punished for losing all the time, like games, you know, somebody did, like that team was a super regional team. That means their RPI was pretty good last year. At the end, I think it's in the top 16. If you could just play and not get punished for it, we play every day for about a month and let them get in rhythm and kind of see what you have, and uh, or at least what you're talking about. I was telling uh, Joe and Jay, Bob, and Matt. I mean, for me, if you can play and let guys throw every fifth or sixth day for about a month. You, you guys would get in rhythm, and you'd be better. But the problem is people have more pitching than you. And like yesterday's game, uh, for instance, I mean, that kid threw the ball really well. I mean, you're seeing them on their Saturday. Right. And uh, But now I'm, I'm hard-headed. I think we should win no matter what day it is, if that makes sense, no matter who's pitching. Sometimes i got to watch that. A couple – Weeks ago, Tanner Trumbo was talking about how his lockers in between, like um, Josh Young and I think the other one was Cam Ward. He was talking about how great these veterans have been with helping him and some of the other young guys have really had a lot of good things to say about the veteran leadership. Have you seen any specific examples of that? What you're talking about is Klein, Josh and Klein. Yeah, He's okay. between Klein. Yeah, Josh and Josh and Brian both, and Cam, and Braxton. All those guys are really good leaders by example. They've kind of uh, engaged at times. Uh, they, they're all guys that are pretty diligent about coming in and working. Um, you, know, you can learn a lot as a hitter by watching Josh. I mean, obviously. I mean, if you, if you just pay attention to what he does in the cage and how diligent he is about preparing, absolutely those guys. Yeah, there's there's been a number of examples. Uh, and I think the pitching staff's uh, done a really good job from that standpoint, too. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of them in there that are diligent about what they do. What's the thought process on changing up the top of your order? Yeah. Um, really like the balance right there that we had today. And, uh, you know, I, I would say that uh, Noisy's been swinging the bat better than Gabe. That spot comes up a lot of times. Um, and I just mean just – I don't mean getting hits. I mean hitting the ball hard. Mm -hmm. And you just want that guy uh, really just felt like we needed just take a look at it. It might be something, too, where when you go against um, right-handed at times, you might flip those guys. Right. So just wanted to see it. It's kind of part of what we were talking about. You get information. and Gabe's an awful good leadoff hitter, but Noyes is an awful good hitter in a scoring position. So give up something to get something. Talking about guys who have been swinging a hot bat, Cody, has that just been an approach thing that's allowed him to really succeed, especially the past four? Most of the time it is, absolutely, getting a good pitch to hit and approach. He played He played the small game good today, showing Bunn a couple of times. I, I felt like helped him uh, for sure. Well, first off, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm sure we're all pretty tired. Um, I don't think anyone's done this. Uh, especially not nine inning games, maybe in high school tournaments and stuff, but um, nothing five games, five days like that for college ball. So, I mean, it's a big step for us. I mean, you look at it, and it's kind of like a major league type schedule because they play lots of days in a row. So for us, that's basically what it was kind of kind of like. I know we're all tired, uh, rightfully so. Uh, those were some long games, but um, we had a good weekend, I think. Uh, we had a little setback yesterday, but uh, 
I mean, we had four in one weekend, long weekend, and I thought it was pretty good. Coach said if y'all didn't get punished RPI-wise, you would want to play every day. Do you share that sentiment? Play every day? I mean, if he wants us to play every day, we got to be ready to play every day. So, I mean, it would suck playing that many games in a row, but if that's what he wants to do, he's a man. Prepare you for your future, though, right? Yeah, for sure. You're for all of us, yeah. yeah. Okay, he said he said a lot of y'all would figure out whether or not you loved it. Oh, no so, doubt. Yeah. yeah, if you wake up one day and you're like, oh, gosh, we have another one. But uh, I think we all woke up just ready and determined to get through these five games and, and see where we stand. To see a young guy like Easton kind of spark that any big inning with his first hit of the year, how nice is it? As a he had some barrels today. He found a lot of barrels. Uh, he had good swings. Um, but him to spark that inning was huge for us. You could tell we were kind of came out a little flat, I think. Um, and when he got that hit, it kind of just woke us up and sparked us to get on a run. How nice was it for Bryce then to kind of carry, especially when y'all were trying to get going as an offense for Bryce to kind of carry y'all? Oh, yeah, he pitched fantastic today. What did he go, six and a third, something like that? I don't know. Um, yeah, he did what he was supposed to do, keep us in the ball ballgame, uh, keep it tight. And that's exactly what he did until we ultimately took the lead. He uh, kind of struggled with his control that first game, but if you have stuff like his, is it just eventual that he'll kind of come around? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, he's got great stuff. It's very electric. Um, and all pitchers have trouble finding the zone sometimes. It's just finding that release point, and when he does, watch out. He's pretty electric. Can you see his confidence growing day by day? On the oh, yeah. Especially here at home, he's been pretty good. He's been going deep in games, and that's what we need out of him. So, I mean, watching him and playing behind him is fun. Would you say you all had like an extra chip on your shoulder coming into today, considering how yesterday went, you guys being so close but barely slipping away? Yeah, we didn't want to lose that game yesterday, uh, for sure. So coming in today, we wanted to win this one. We couldn't drop two in a row. Uh, Stetson's a good club. They're a very young club. Um, and so losing that game yesterday hurt. Uh, so coming in today, we wanted to take this one. Did you have to change any way you approached your kind of make the way you approached pregame physically or anything when it came to approaching a five game? Oh, yeah, we pulled back a little bit. Uh, fungo, we didn't take as many. We didn't take in and out today. Uh, we had to scale it back, make sure our legs were fresh. Because, uh, I mean, you get into that fifth day, you're waking up going, oof, a little sore today. But um, our, our coaches and staff did a good job managing that, making sure that we took limited reps um, to make sure we were good for all five days. What, uh, was there any particular reaction when Tim changed up on top of the lineup today? I think it might have been because Gabe was swinging at the first pitch and getting out a lot. Um, <laughs> honestly, try to get him to see more pitches. Um, but no, I think we were just trying to go right, left, right, left, uh, early in the batting order. How does that change? Like, does it help give the lineup, you know, a different kind of advantage batting, you know, right, left, right, left, like that? Really, just keep knowing that you're somewhat keeping a pitcher on his toes because. Either way, for them, every other batter is going to be a, a matchup. Yeah, so you don't want him. You don't want him to get into a routine of throwing it. Like, let's say we send three righties in a row, he's going to be hitting the outside corner three times in a row. He gets comfortable doing that. But you send right, left, right, left. Now he's got to mix it up both sides of the plate, and that's when you can start hammering pitchers because they start leaving stuff over the middle. Do you prefer that, like that kind of lineup as a hitter? Like, do you nah, like, we don't really care. No, nah, not really. So how's your plot? It's getting better. I like that a triple today. That was interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, we're getting better. Uh, we've gotten to the point where in pregame, I don't have to wrap it up. I can just go out there and have fun. Um, still getting some treatment on it. Oh, no day. doubt. Yeah, we'll be doing treatment, I'm sure, for a long time to come to make sure it's 100%. But when, was that all, just, you just feel that all of a sudden that night you were? Yeah, I was rounding third, scoring on double, and I just felt something. And it was, off, yeah, pretty much. It was weird. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I played football and get lots of bruises, but that's about it. Back in the day, close the yearbook. What am I doing? <laughs> um, you know, really, it's just kind of putting things into perspective. Not going to strike everybody out. Not going to get everybody out. Guys are going to get on base. You're going to give up hits. You're going to give up walks. It's just, you know, playing pitch to pitch. You know, just doing whatever you got to do to get through innings and put your team in the best uh, position to win. At a certain point today, do you feel like you're in a groove? Um, usually for me, if I can get through the first inning, I feel really good because I, you know, obviously I still think about my first outing and giving up a bunch of walks and getting yanked after one out. Um, 
but for me, it's always just been if I can get through the first inning, I feel like my confidence goes up, uh, everything starts rolling, I'm able just to kind of settle in. But that's also something that I've got to get over. You know, I've got to learn to go out from pitch one and just dominate. So, what do you what do you consider like your out pitch or your best? Um, what you like to throw the most? I mean, I love my fastball. Uh, you know, I love throwing in on hitters. I like, you know, I'm not afraid to throw up and in, back a guy off the plate. Um, you know, before this year, never really had a change up, but, you know, I was able to work on one in the fall and just kind of uh, been able to use that this season so far. Um, but usually my slider has always been like my out pitch. But, uh, you know, right now, fastball command is what I need to work on and keep getting better at, so I'll probably keep throwing those. And what, what, what have you touched with the fastball, and what are you kind of sit at? Um, I think I've hit either 98 or 99 or something like that, but, uh, you know, I'll sit, you know, pretty much 94, 96 for most of the game. Usually toward the sixth inning, I'll drop down to 93, 95 or something like that, but I would say probably mid-90s is where I'd sit. Going 98 pitches and six in the third today, uh, how did you feel just kind of continuing to stretch out? Um, you know, it feels it felt good. You know, let, you know, I thought I was going to be done after the sixth. Um, you know, I was happy they let me go back out there and just kind of go hitter to hitter. But um, you know, for me, you know, what I took away from this game is that I've got to be more efficient early. You know, because I feel like I wasn't tired. I didn't feel like I was worn out. I felt like I could have gone longer. But uh, you know, when your pitch count gets up into the, you know, I think it was at 100 pitches or something by the sixth inning. You know, the coaches aren't going to leave you in there for that long. So I've got to learn to be more efficient early um, and just get ahead on hitters. So, you talking about not feeling super tired. Does having to pitch, having pitched on a Monday, have anything to do with that? Can maybe a little bit of extended rest for you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, they brought me in for a hitter against Michigan just so that I'd be able to see a hitter before this start because my. You know, I think my last outing before this was in San Diego when we played San Diego State. But uh, no, I mean, um, we work hard in the weight room and conditioning, so I feel like, you know, all of us or all of our starters are able to go for a while. We don't get tired very easily. But, um, you know, I don't think, I don't, when I'm out there, I don't feel tired. I just, you know, like I said, playing pitch to pitch, just focusing on, you know, the hitter in front of me. So. As you'll start to get into the kind of the meat of the conferences, and what's the biggest thing you still want? Uh, throwing strikes. Um, tired of walking guys. Tired of putting myself in situations where I put the first two guys on, or even the lead, just the leadoff guy on, and having to pitch out of the stretch, and always having to worry about having a runner on base. I need to just learn to fill up the zone early. Um, you know, not throw as many pitches, and uh, you know, keep getting, keep letting guys put the ball in play. And I mean, we have an amazing defense. I need to let them make plays and just keep moving forward with that. So you showed, a, you showed a little bit of noticeable frustration after that inning. I forget which inning it was where you gave up, I think, what, what, two walks in that one. Is that just a mental thing of getting past that? Mm -hmm. um, like coaches, I mean, all the coaches will say it. I'm pretty competitive. I don't like it when anyone gets on base. I don't care how they got on. But um, for me, yeah, it's just throwing strikes. You know, today I felt like, you know, Stetson was a good, you know, hitting team, but I felt like if I put it in the zone and just let them put the ball in play, my defense would make plays, and I just get really frustrated with myself when, you know, I'm just letting them get on base because, I mean, our defense can't defend a walk, so I've just got to learn to throw more strikes. So uh, when you're having trouble locating, do you think that is it sometimes because your ball moves quite a bit, or is it still uh, just working on your mechanics to fine tune? Your for me, it's you know, I really don't think much about mechanics. Uh, you know, this is only like my third year pitching. I've always just been a feel, like I just, I was a position player, so I was always a feel guy. If I threw a ball six inches to the left outside, I was gonna throw six inches over to the right. Um, but, you know, I just, I feel like I just gotta lock in. You know, sometimes I speed up on myself. Uh, I just need to learn to, you know, kind of slow down. That's why sometimes I'll step off and, you know, kind of breathe for a second, remind myself to, you know, stay at a good pace. But, uh, you know, usually Braxton and Gardner, they usually do a good job of slowing me down and just kind of telling me to breathe and not go too quick. So. So you said you've only been a pitcher for three years. Mm -hmm. You were primarily what before that? I was a shortstop before that. I mean. And you could throw high nineties and they didn't have you on the mound. I didn't ever step on a mound until my senior year of high school. I uh, when I went, you know, I started my career at Arkansas. 
I went there as a two-way just because they heard I could pitch my senior year, but I committed there as a shortstop or an outfielder. So I was never a pitcher until uh, my senior year of high school, and I think the only reason I threw then was just because we had nobody else. <laughs> so. And how did you take that switch? Because I assume if you played shortstop, oh, you, you like having a you Oh, yeah, I mean, that, right? no, pitching is so boring. I mean, being a pitcher is not pitching in the game, but being a pitcher is so boring. You don't play most of the time. And then when, you know, if you have a bad outing, you have to wait so long to get back in the game. You have to wait a week or you have to wait three games or whatever. And it's really frustrating. But uh, yeah, being a pitcher is really boring <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> but uh, but now I just got to keep getting better at it and keep uh, helping my team or putting my team in the best situation to win. So, so do you ever tell? Tim that you'd like to take a few packs. Oh, I always do. I'm always like, how much, how much do I have to pay for a pinch hit? But uh, no, I don't think, I think we've got a lot of other guys that are probably a little better. <laughs>